It's done. It's done. The Forge Wing is officially done. Oh my goodness. Always nice starting an episode off with a banger time lapse like that, right? Just so you guys can see all the building that I've been up to the last, well, few days actually. This was, this took me a bit, um, but I absolutely love the way this turned out. You know, you, you saw the floor before. We explained how we're going to have gold on the left and redstone on the right, but now you can kind of see how it carries up into the ceiling as well. And we got these really cool battle axes. By the way, shout out to Opal Whisker from my ISV community for the help with this. It's it's just fantastic. I, I love it. And it's got such a huge variation of blocks. It was a bit tedious to build, but I mean, I think we can all agree, totally worth it. I love the combination in here of like the lava, the heat, right? And then the water, it's just, it's, it's really cool, and it does make sense in the forging process, right? Because we've got to heat up the metals so that we can shape them, and then we get them shaped over here, and we get them in the water to cool them back down so that they uh, stay hardened. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I, not, that I, not that I've ever forged anything myself, but from, from what I've read, that's how it works. Uh, <laughs> any, any expert people that have done their own forging, please, in the comments, let me know what you think of this forge. Did we, did we miss anything? Do I need to bring in any other details? Maybe we need to... Maybe we need to hang some tools. You know, we have our art item frames and stuff that we can hang little tools and stuff. We can add some more bits and bobs in here, including what we want to do with these armor stands. And I want to get them decked out in not just regular armor trim, you know, like gold and then like trim it with whatever. Uh, I want to actually give them like a real suit of netherite armor because I like the way it looks. I think it fits the vibe in here. The, the purple is one of my favorite colors when it's gleaming from the enchantments. And then we got the gold mixed in. So I've been harvesting some ancient debris on live streams. And I have enough for a full set of armor for all four armor stands. Hi, guy. Look at this guy. He came all the way over from the industrial district, flew across the ocean to give me that slime ball. What a, what a dedicated employee. Off he goes. <laughs> anyway, uh, something else came up during the uh, the time I was building that. I I applied for a job over in Scarland. Uh, I, I couldn't wait. I, I had to do it. It was already filling up with candidates. Uh, so I went over as soon as I could. Scar was streaming. I was streaming. And I got signed up. So I'm going to put a little clip in there. And, uh, and, and today, I think we need to focus on what it's going to take to actually get that job. Look at this impulse. There's a book over here. Help wanted, you Scarland can, Handyman. You can fill it out. Wait, wait, wait. There's a difference between handyman and janitor though, right? Like, I'm not like declogging toilets and stuff. Oh no, that's Pearl's job. She's the cleaning lady. Okay, okay, Whew. All right. And by the Perfect. way, chat, I did pay her 32 diamonds in the barrel. Ooh, I like this. Redstone genius. So if I get the job, can oh if I get the job, can I have a name card, uh, nameplate on my shirt that says Redstone Genius? So it'll say like of impulse, course. and then underneath it, Redstone Genius. Of course. Nice. Of course. Yes. Nice. Got to bring the park to life. Okay. Wait, has anybody signed up? How many? How many people am I dealing? Oh, 32 diamonds a week. Perfect. <gasps> There's already been a sign up scar. So after talking to Scar for a while, finding out exactly what he needs from a redstoner like myself, and a few questions about 
my knowledge of Disneyland and its Imagineers. Uh, I, I I finally decided to go ahead and throw my name in the book. And let's see. We've got Cub Fan the Redstone Wonder. I, of course, had to uh, uh, throw a little title in myself. Impulse the Redstone Genius for Hire. And then also uh, Tango of the Tech Variety, who has made a Ferris wheel in the past. And then it looks like Doc M. Uh, also, so he's got, we've got four people that, that want this job that I need to, I need to beat out. Wait, why is there 15 pages? Edward the Dragon Slayer sparkly defending the twilight. I don't know if that's a real submission or not, but I had to see what was on the 15th page. So not only am I going to have to come up with some redstone devices to impress Scar, I'm also going to have to research some of his favorite people in, from, from Disney, like Bob Gurr, the original Imagineer who designed the uh, Autopia cars and uh, what else did he do? He, did, he, may, he may have designed the Matterhorn and, and the monorail. He's done a lot. And I can see why Scar likes him so much. I, I did start actually watching the uh, Imagineer story on Disney Plus as he suggested. I'm doing my homework, guys. I really want this job. All right, let's pop on over to the industrial district, bring our redstone boxes out and see if we can design something that is gonna work for Scar. So basically what he wants is a turnstile that until somebody throws in their ticket, either their one day admission or their VIP admission ticket, it will not let them into the theme park. And of course, if they throw in anything else, it's not gonna let them in at all. And I, I think he also would, would like it to mock them and tell them to go away or something. So we gotta come up with a machine that is gonna do that. And of course, in order to do that, we are gonna need hoppers, filtering systems, and I'm thinking as far as the turnstile itself goes, it might be easy enough to just have like a piston that's extended, and then while it's extended, they can't go through, and then when it retracts, that's what actually lets them through. That probably would work the best, I believe, and would also look good. So I'm going to start to build something up that hopefully does exactly what Scar needs. All right, so I built us up in the air a little bit so that we can get underneath for the redstone without having to dig this place up. And this is kind of what I'm envisioning. So we've got our little turnstile here that's gonna keep the customer from getting into the park. And once they put in their ticket, then we need to get a signal off of that and open the door for them. Now, in this case, it's a one day admission, which means they're let in and their ticket is, is taken from them. Basically, they can only use it one time. But there's also another set of tickets for a VIP admission, and that one's got another requirement. It actually needs to be given back to the customer after they are let in. So on the other side of here, I'm gonna have to pull this out of an item filter and spit it back out. And then the third option, as I said before, was what if they put in something completely random, like, you know, not a ticket. That can probably just be spit right back to them somewhere here, right? So we got like three things to process, and I think we're going to start things off by going underneath and all the items put in that dropper need to go through an item filter system. All right, a little bit of redstone in. I've got the sorting system, and I didn't go with my overflow proof one because honestly, I don't think it's going to get to that point. I mean, he could do a double chest and be collecting admissions for, you know, probably the rest of the season and be just fine. So I don't think it needs to be overflow proof, but I do have two item filters in here. One's looking for the VIP and one's looking for the one day admission. And then if it's neither one of those, it's just going to end up in this dropper right there. Now, from there, we just need to understand if a one-day admission is flowing through into this chest uh, that we need to actually open the gate. And so that's what this comparator is doing. It's just watching this hopper to see if that actually flows through. And if so, it's just going to activate this comparator burnout clock because we want to give them a little bit of time to get through the turnstile. So that's going to deactivate that torch when this gets powered, which means the piston will retract. So that's the easy one. Let's just make sure it's working here. We'll go up top. We'll put in our one-day admission and... Gate is opened. We can walk on through. Don't need to give them back that ticket or anything. And it's done. All right. Now the more difficult one. We need the VIP. And this one, we actually need to spit back the ticket to them. So uh, I'd say maybe put it about here. So once they walk through the turnstile, it just pops the ticket right back in their pocket. And then they can con continue on into the park. Next part of the system is done. Now if it comes in and it's VIP, it goes through here, heads off into this direction, 
and into this dropper, uh, little dropper elevator right here. And when that happens, we can detect that item coming through right here and activate the dropper elevator to spit it out and then also activate the clock once again to drop the actual turnstile. So let's go ahead and give it a test, see if it works. VIP admission goes in and drops and there it comes. So they see it pop out and they know I better walk through and grab that before the gate closes because uh, that would be bad if they didn't. So, okay, that is two down. The final thing was if they put something else in that's basically not a ticket, that it needs to just give it back to them and not actually let them in. So I believe that it was pretty close to already just being done. Let's see if we put in something that's not a ticket, nothing happens, and where does it end up? Yeah, just right here in this dropper. So that should be pretty simple. Let's see, let's put in something else. That should end up there. Perfect. And then we just need to spit that back out. So, yeah, we should be able to just grab a signal off of this dropper right here. Maybe just a comparator that detects that something's actually in it. And then fire it off. Now, this will need to get covered probably with either blocks or carpet since it's right here at ground level. But I think that's going to be okay. All right. Something like that will do. So now when they put something in here... It should just pop right back out there. Great. And now we know we're getting signal from this. So Scar did mention maybe activating some kind of, you know, something like... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly what he wants to do. I'll talk to him about that, if, you know, of course, if and, and when I get the job. But, uh, yeah, we just proved that we can do exactly what he is wanting. And I think... I think this will help prove our case that we are the right person for the job. While we're waiting on Scar to call us in for an interview, I've been working a little bit more here on the forge area in the keep. And you can see we now have armor trim on our, our suits here. And they look absolutely fantastic. Look at that. And you can see I added in a little bit of extra lighting as well because... Once we had the armor trim on, I, I really wanted it to be visible. I wanted it to be seen really well. And so we snuck in a couple lights underneath some stairs here. And not just that, but actually inside these armor stands. See, I can't exactly walk through. I'm actually standing on an end rod right now. And so I was having a hard time actually getting the end rod into an armor stand. And it, it looks great. It lights it up. But I had to actually call in Cleo for a little bit of help. So luckily she swung by and, and taught me how to do all the armor stand magic. Oh, there's, whoa, that was weird. Someone coming through a portal? No, 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 you like, you you were up high and you like fell as you came through. <laughs> just magic, that was, just magic. That's, it was crazy, I gotta turn you up though. Did you just not wanna hear me at one point? No, you're perfect it? now. <laughs> um, okay, so in here, I'm trying to do some decorations. And okay. I have armor stands, and you mm -hmm. will see they are very cool. So they're so cool, I would like to shed a little more light on the subject, if you will. And one of the suggestions I had was to shove an end rod in the armor stand. Oh, yeah, no, here, here's like, right, easy, easy fix. Okay, okay. let's start with, uh, in your basic armor stand book, say, apply gravity, no. Okay, I think I did that already. Okay. okay. I'm going to use the wand uh, to do it. Do you, oh, do you have wand. a wand? No, I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> Teach me the ways of the wand, Cleo. Um, okay, so if you go into the book and you go, you need a mushroom on a stick to oh. start with. So you just like you came with wand in... Rod? I might somewhere. I could go, I could go get one. I has warped fungus on a stick. Just Fabulous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, go into your book. Okay. You want to go to page six, have it in your hand, and then click get adjustment wand. You've got to have it in your hand, though, I think. How do you do that? Wait, six, my page. Oh, no, Cleo, my book is old. Pose. I have an old book. Mine's, mine's 2.9. Oh, yeah, the latest is 2.10. You just need to get a writable book if you've got a writable book. Hold on, I know exactly what to do with this. I know exactly <laughs> what to do with this book. It's get out of here, you piece of junk. All right, let me go get a book. Okay, I have, I, have a, okay. I have a book and quill. I have to make it something. Right. Uh, command, trigger something. You can do something. that, or you can just write garbage in it and title it Statues with a capital S. Yeah. Ha ha. 
Haha. Okay, Has now it. go to page six. <laughs> now we go to page six. Get adjustment wand. Okay, yeah, that was, was that I was missing before. Yes. Now what I would recommend you do, okay, is go to page four. Oh no. Book, and then click five degrees because you know, uh, nice way to do adjustments. Uh, Leo. Yeah? My wand disappeared. It's Didn't gone. it go into your inventory? Uh. uh no. <laughs> Have mine. It's gone. Have mine. It's gone. Have mine. It's fine. I'll make, I've got another at home. Okay. With the wand in your hand, yep. approach it. And it should little glass bits on uh -huh. the yes. extremities. Now, that. the black one at the bottom will tell you which direction the entire arm stand is moving. <gasps> oh, forward, backward. Got it. Okay. Forward, backward. Neat. Right, if you shift and right click on the wand, shift, right click, it will change the axis which you're using. Ah. Oh, jeez. Okay. Go to Y. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Up you go. And up he, up he goes. Up, up he goes. Up, Keep on going up, up until up, he's up, up into up, the next up, block. Up, 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 up. A little higher just in case. Okay. He did it. I'm going to... I'm going to... You stole this what pants. What the heck did I just do? You, you put the pants on. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, I put the boots on. And the boots. Right, too. okay. I'm trying to get the boots onto him. <laughs> there we go. No, Wait, that's no, onto that's me on again. You. Why is this not working? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> what have you done? You just keep wanting to steal my boots. There we go. Uh, it's so just nice. because they're better than your boots, maybe? It takes precedence to put them on you? I don't know. Possibly. Possibly. Now, that wasn't a dig in any way, but... Okay, put your put your, uh, your your light stick in. The light stick. Bam. There okay. it goes. Now bring him down. You might want to okay. take the boots off again. You might have to. Okay, there you go. and then, oh, now, that's the other way. Bring him down. Oh. Oh, no! Okay, hold on. Don't okay. hit the actual thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, you might have a problem with this, getting it all the way to oh, the bottom. I'm going to... Ding it! Okay, we'll do it, the, we'll do it the easier way. Okay. Open the book. Go to page three. Bop. Page and three. And there are... Uh, yeah, where it says nudge position, yeah. do Y minus eight twice. Um, what you might want to do is you might want to take him down a bit more. Nudge oh, him but down once he got the shoes on, maybe that will make a difference. Let's see. Oh, yeah, the shoes on. Yeah, put the shoes on him. You should be okay. Able to there you go. Yeah, look at him. Ta-da! You did a thing! Ta-da! Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much for Welcome. the help. Thank you for the tutorial. I'm, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is if you've got an armor stand with you at all, you can just have a fiddle with, because that wand works on all of the joints as well. Right. Yeah, you just got to fiddle with the axes to make sure you're getting the right one. See, now so, he says, "Yep, teacher, I have a question." See, <laughs> yeah, I've, I'm, I'm now, no, I am no longer a teacher. <laughs> I don't have to answer questions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. No, I appreciate but, um, that. Yeah, no, that's that's the basics of like all armor stand tutorials. Enjoy. Thank you. This one is awesome. I appreciate it. That's okay. I'll go make myself another one. I'll see you later. Are you sure? Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. And then once I started getting the hang of armor stands, I decided let's do a little bit more with them. So now you can see we've got little hangers for tools around the place here. And I think that looks pretty cool. This was all done with that armor stand book. In fact, there was just a preset in there that we basically just put an armor stand down, put the tool in its hand and clicked one button in the book and voila, boom, it's inside these actual hooks like they're hanging. And I think it's just a nice little added detail to the place. However, I am kind of struggling on what to do on this side because that worked out great. We have gold tools and stuff, but over here, I'm not really sure what to do with the details over here. I want something kind of red and redstone related, but played around with a few ideas and really couldn't find anything I like so I'm 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 soliciting right now for your advice guys if you have any ideas on on what we could do to the kind of hang things on this back wall let me know in the comments because yeah I want it to to have little knickknacks kind of like over there it just kind of just brings a little bit extra life to this place Oh, and another thing happened while I was live streaming. You see, they always ask me to go check on the button, which I went and did, and it turned out it was actually a decent time to do so. 
Well, I've got myself a dilemma here. <laughs> I did kind of want to wait for the purple and just get all three in one swoop, but it's been tough going. Every time I come here, somebody's got it and reset the button. So I think I'm just going to do it. I think we'll work our way up. So I've already got that one. We're going to go ahead and get the red and we're going to get some diamonds out of it too. Look at that. We get a full diamond block. Here we go. Oh, what the? Uh, what just happened? Uh, where am I? What is going on in here? Hello? Meanwhile, my reward's being spit out. Someone's gonna come take it. I need to get out of here. There we go. We got it. Nobody stole it. Oh. What is happening? What? Why did the ground just open and suck me under? All right, there we go. It's been reset. And um, let's see what it looks like. Why not? You know, we don't walk around with these crowns on because we lose the beard because of it. But I mean, look at that. That is a fancy, fancy crowd. And once we get to the purple one there, uh, I might, I might have to, uh, I might have to wear that one. Well, all right. I think that was a pretty successful episode. We got so much done. And I, I just love, I love the fact that we got this forge done pretty quick. Like we got it done in two episodes and that's one more wing down in the Dwarven Keep and one to go. We've got this back one and I'll probably take a little bit of time before I get started on it. But this back one is going to be the mess hall and sleeping quarters. So we're finally going to have a decent place to rest our head at night and a, a decent place to have a meal. So that's what this is going to be about. And as you can see, uh, it's going to require a little bit of digging as well. I don't think uh, we have enough space here. So yeah, anyway, that's next up on the list for here in the keep. And of course, to finish things out, we'll have a lot more to go down below. But it is coming along and it's it's a, it's just awesome. I, I'm super happy that it's done and I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments how you think this turned out. And I'm looking forward to having my interview with Scar and hopefully getting the job in Scarland and uh, being able to do a whole bunch of cool, fun redstone stuff over there. So, uh, you know, to be continued, make sure you stick around, hit the subscribe button, and and that way you don't miss any of the videos, and, and the like button. If you enjoyed this one, I would much appreciate that. And that's going to do it for me today. So with that said, have a good one, everyone.